I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about dropdowns, scrolling, motion blur, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool article about how to make a mega dropdown, not just a regular dropdown, a mega dropdown. Do they have like a, a, any lesser degrees of that or nope. it, it just go straight to mega? Yep, right. it escalates pretty quickly. This cool is something that you might see on like Amazon or a website that has just a ton of categories and subcategories and needs to work on mobile and has all sorts of requirements. So this is for really big sites. This is not for you know, a one pager or something like that where you just have a few links. Mega sites maybe. That's right. So let's take a look at the demo. And up here on the left, we have this drop down here. So I'll click it. And you'll notice that clicking on it is what actually activates it. You don't hover over it and activate it. You have to actually click. And then when you hover over the subcategories, you can all have all sorts of really nice layouts uh, like these ones. And you can even have maybe a few subcategories as well. It's pretty robust, and if you've ever tried to build a drop-down menu before, you know just how difficult it can be. It seems kind of simple, but there's actually a lot to it. So let's go back to the article here, and it says this is a responsive and easy to use customizable mega drop-down component. I read some of those words, right? And they have a little animated GIF of what it looks like. We saw what it looks like on desktop, but they also have a really nice animation. It shows you what it looks like on mobile. And the idea is that, like I said, you want to click on it to actually activate it. If you do want to change this particular dropdown to work on hover, you can do that. It's easy enough. But this is mostly a user interface or user experience decision that they made where you want to actually click it to activate it because it can be a little bit easier to use that way and really clarifies the user's intent much better. I like it on mobile because, and they mentioned this in the article, that it takes the full focus of the screen. And I think that's actually kind of a nice move on their part because on mobile screens, obviously, there's less space. So just making the decision and saying, yep, if you tap this, it's just going to take up the whole screen. Really gives you kind of a lot of leeway and other types of decisions that you might make and allows you to have those robust layouts for the menu. It was so, a mega good decision. It was. So all the code is there. They also have some slight variations for how it might look on tablet. Definitely be sure to check this one out because, like I said, making these types of drop downs is notoriously difficult. So if you could find a really good one like this that just works, should definitely go with that. Yeah, it's mega cool. Mega cool. Next up, we have a project called readremaining.js. This is a very, very simple jQuery plugin that tells you how much longer you have to go when reading a page. Oh, nice. I have like a one second read. Hey. Hey, that was pretty quick. Yeah, that was the one second. Wow. Maybe, uh, okay, so you might not need this, no. this plugin. But let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. If you look at the top left, it shows you in this, in this little div right here how much longer you have to go. Now, the centered one is what I prefer. As you're scrolling, scroll down a little bit. Plugin doesn't work. Just kind of wait, see what's going on. Hey, nothing's going on. Let's scroll down a little bit more, see if anything happens. There it is. It says we have two minutes and six seconds left to read the rest of this block of text. So what happens if I don't make it in time? Is this like a self-destruct type message? Yeah, you're going to be quizzed. OK. Yeah, sorry. Right. Um, yeah, your computer uh, actually destructs if you don't make it to the end of the article Wow. in time. Yeah, I mean, it's an option. You can disable that. But okay. I mean, yeah. why, why would you? No, yeah, you know, it's, it's why, good motivation for reading. Why, why would you? Uh, so anyway, really easy to use. Just drop the script and CSS in your page and then call read remaining. Now, if you want to customize it, you can. Uh, it lets you show, uh, it lets you customize how long the gauge delay is. So as you're scrolling down, if you want it to show it immediately, just set that down to a very, very low number. Uh, show it on start and the different time formats. 
Anyway, uh, quick plug in, but if this is something that you would like to have on your page, go ahead and check it out. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a motion blur effect with SVGs. So let's go ahead and look at this demo. And so far, so good. There's a little carousel here. We've seen that before. But watch what happens when we swipe through here. Whoa. Whoa, why don't you swipe a little slower, Nick? You're going to get a speeding ticket. So if we actually kind of just wobble this back and forth, you can see how there is a motion blur effect. It's a little bit hard to see, maybe on video, because you can only see it when it's actually moving. And because it's blurry. That's right, and it is blurry, but I promise you it is there. So you may want to check this out on your own in a web browser, but it's applying this motion blur effect to the left and right, and it's a little bit easier to see in this picture, so it's actually blurring the image as you move it back and forth. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes in, say, motion graphics, you can add a greater sense of motion when you add a directional blur like this, and on a web page where maybe the frames per second aren't as high, you can actually get away with lower frames per second in some instances with a motion blur like this because it sort of interpolates the frames that you don't have and shows you what it would actually end up looking like so you get that nice blur effect. Now something to point out before I get into this is that attention, this is highly experimental and it only works in some modern browsers and Chrome seems to have the best performance. So if you are looking at this, be sure to check it out in Chrome. That seems to work the best. So this is a motion blur effect with SVG. And if you know anything about the CSS blur filter, you know that it doesn't have a directional blur. So we have to actually create this ourselves using an SVG filter. Now there's another article linked here that covers that in more detail. So if you don't know about SVG filters, be sure to check that out because they are pretty cool. So basically they just apply this Gaussian blur filter as a primitive and then they manipulate it a little bit with JavaScript and they're actually filtering every single frame to get this effect. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. There's actually quite a bit more to this, but definitely be sure to check this article out because it is a pretty fascinating technique that I have not seen before. It's pretty original. Yeah, it's really cool. It looks, it looks great too. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Scroll Watch. This is a piece of JavaScript that will allow you to attach events based on scroll position in a browser. So what does that mean? Let's go ahead and just see how it works first. Scroll down to the bottom of the page here. Now, uh, if we look at this little box right here, we can scroll the page to see Scroll Watch in action. And as we are scrolling, you'll see the text gets faded in a little bit. Now, you can do more than just fade in text. It works with pretty much any container. Here's one for infinite scrolling. And as we scroll down the page, it says, I am lazy and late to the party. Now, this element is being added each time we get near the bottom of the page. Now you can do more than just add elements and there's actually quite a bit you can do. You can watch any element uh, and you can even do multiple instances of this. Now what's really neat about it is it gives you an event to attach once the element comes into frame and then you can also give it options to throttle, wait a certain number of milliseconds before doing something. And then here's this event on element in view, attach any function to this and you are pretty much good to go. Customize exactly what happens. So there are a lot of things that you could use this for. It could be used for infinite scrolling, effects, just tons of different things. If you're in need of a plugin to use for something like that, definitely check out Scroll Watch. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is how to vertically center a clipped image in CSS. So let's just right off the bat, what does that mean? Uh, sometimes when you serve up an image in CSS, it could be cut off at the top or bottom. So maybe you have a certain height that an image needs to fit into, but you don't want to resize the image and sort of crush it into this horizontal tiny little box. 
So you need to either cut off the top or cut off the bottom, and it can be difficult to actually just get it right there in the middle. So what this article describes is how to calculate an offset and then use the top and transform properties to move it into position. So for the actual image, once it's already been cropped with a wrapper, you'll set the top property to the value of 50% and that will move the image down 50% of the wrapper height. So that will get you your vertical centering. Then you use transform with the property or excuse me, the value translate Y and that will actually move it towards the middle. So you have that at negative 50% and that will move it inside that wrapper div and put it in the middle. And then you'll get something that looks like this. And no matter what image you use, it'll actually just show you this picture of a wolf. That's very useful. Which I kind of like because I really always need that on my websites. No. I had to pause when you said that to make sure that that was correct. I got nothing. Uh, this actually will work. I mean, oh. if I were really using that in production, it would give me claws for alarm. This will actually work all the way back to IE 9. Look at that pack of browsers. It, it is a pack of browsers, and it will work on you know Firefox way far back, Chrome way far back. So it actually has pretty strong browser support. It's definitely an OK technique to use, and it's pretty good. And that way, you know, you can go ahead and click on something like that and actually see the full image there if you want to and go back. So pretty nice stuff. I, I really like this technique a lot. I thought those jokes would have had you howling a little bit more with laughter. That's all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, make sure to check out the show notes right below this video. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.